For some unknown reason, in the last few months, several researchers released separate papers discussing one single idea. The idea of so-called black hole batteries. Or essentially using black holes as a potential source of nearly unlimited clean energy that hypothetically we could maybe use one day if we basically find a way to somehow create them or if we actually find hypothetical primordial black holes somewhere in the solar system. And so in this video I wanted to discuss at least one of the recent papers that essentially proposes the most efficient battery ever with the highest possible energy density of anything out there. And so hello wonderful person, this is Anton and let's discuss these hypothetical propositions and also maybe talk about how likely are we ever to achieve this or is this even feasible. But let's start with the most important fact. We're not talking about large black holes or basically black holes formed by supernova or the ones found in centers of various galaxies. Here we're talking about microscopic black holes, black holes with a mass of maybe an asteroid or even less. And black holes whose size would be literally smaller than the atom of hydrogen. And it's these tiny primordial black holes that are actually kind of exciting. And exciting for many different reasons. For example, their existence has been proposed by a lot of different scientists and can technically explain so many mysteries about the universe. And so it's these black holes, super tiny black holes, that are barely visible, barely interact with anything and can even technically pass through matter without being detected. That's the focus of all of these studies. But even today we still have no idea if they exist. A lot of different experiments and a lot of different observations have been conducted to find them. And so far we know that larger black holes with possibly masses of a large planet don't seem to exist out there. For example, there was an experiment with the Andromeda galaxy conducted a few years back where the researchers basically looked at the Andromeda hoping to see some of these black holes pass in front of one of the Andromeda stars. And though they actually expected to find possibly a thousand or so based on the assumptions about these primordial black holes, in reality they only discovered one and we don't even know if it was a black hole or possibly some kind of a rogue planet. And so when it comes to black holes masses of planets, they potentially don't exist or exist in much much smaller numbers. But if these black holes are microscopic, well that's a new problem. We have no means of finding them. But they might exist nevertheless. As a matter of fact, as you might know, one of the potential explanations for Planet 9 or the unusual gravitational anomaly in the solar system is one of these primordial black holes. In this case it would be slightly larger than an apple in terms of size, but with a mass of several Earths. But despite them just being hypothetical, different types of researchers still want to figure out what we can actually do with them if they are found or if we can find a way to make them right here on planet Earth. And in for example one of the previous studies from 2023, a team of researchers proposed that we can use a primordial black hole to basically charge it in order to create a rechargeable battery with the same efficiency as a nuclear reactor. In other words, you can basically introduce matter into this black hole, specifically through various alpha particles, and by doing this correctly we can actually start producing positrons that can then be turned into kinetic energy. And here they used a black hole that was microscopic once again and with the mass of a typical large asteroid. And I guess inspired by this paper, the researchers behind the most recent paper went a few steps further. In their paper, the micro black hole cellular battery, the ultimate limits of battery energy density, the researchers literally designed the ultimate battery and the ultimate power source. But once again, very very hypothetical. But still worth discussing because they do make a very good point at the end. Although for their study to make this happen, they actually rely on black holes in extremely close proximity, microscopic black holes very close to one another, which would definitely require engineering techniques we currently don't have. Now these black holes are obviously not very massive, so technically they should be movable by something, but still way beyond our current capabilities. Now for their paper they use the extreme black holes, basically black holes with the smallest possible mass, known as the Planck mass, but they don't actually talk about how this was produced because this is just a hypothetical example. Although generally similar techniques could be applied to other black holes with other masses as well. But here's the important part. How do you actually prevent these black holes from colliding? They're going to be very close to each other, so something has to be done to hold them in place and to prevent them from colliding. And they solve this in a very intriguing way. 
that way being electromagnetism. If you put a lot of charge in each of these black holes, in their case it's actually Planck charge, or I guess the minimal possible charge, it then becomes possible to kind of counteract gravity with electromagnetism. And so instead of colliding, these black holes now repel each other because they all have the same charge. Although intriguingly, by adding this charge, they also kind of transform these black holes into a different kind of a black hole that according to them is not going to be producing Hawking radiation and basically exploding right away. In a typical small black hole, once it reaches a certain small size, it actually doesn't last very long because of Hawking radiation. The natural radiation black holes produce through quantum effects. And smaller black holes produce so much that they basically evaporate almost right away. And tiny black holes, microscopic black holes, tend to do so much faster. But according to the researchers, once you charge these black holes, they potentially become stable and can actually last indefinitely. But to make this into an actual battery, they charge one side of these black holes positively and the other side negatively. With both sides essentially containing a relatively similar number of these tiny microscopic black holes. It would maybe look something like this. And you kind of get the point now. This now is a battery. And if you actually want to produce energy, you take one of the black holes from both sides and you then have them approach close to each other, which will cause the opposite charges to cancel out and the black holes to combine, first of all merging together, releasing some energy, but then also suddenly releasing all of this Hawking radiation as well, converting all of this mass into energy with basically 100% efficiency. In essence, turning this into a kind of a miniature nuclear reactor, converting mass to energy, but not through the use of fission or fusion, through the use of black holes and their natural propensity to evaporate. And so instead of producing energy using atoms and these subatomic particle bonds, here we're using something entirely different, quantum in nature. But because all of these black holes are initially contained and basically repel each other, preventing collisions, it also creates a kind of a stable energy source with the highest possible energy density. And though ultimately by using the Planck black holes, we create something with the ultimate energy density, even by using a larger microscopic black holes with masses of asteroids, should still be efficient enough. And though in previous examples, especially using the so-called Penrose process, usually the black hole energy is extracted from outside and through the rotation of the black hole, thus requiring some kind of a giant black hole for this to work, here the energy comes from the black hole itself, from within. Although here the researchers also use this to basically demonstrate how we're still in our infancy when it comes to batteries and energy storage. For example, the most efficient lithium battery usually contains 954,000 joules per kilogram of mass. And that's actually 20 times higher than what we get from burning 1 kilogram of oil. But in comparison, in this type of a black hole, a 1 kilogram black hole battery would contain roughly around 471 million times more energy and would thus be able to power something for a much longer time, producing practically no leftovers and nothing toxic behind. Now obviously this is very idealistic and super hypothetical, but here the point they're trying to make is, well our current batteries, chemical batteries, lithium batteries, are just super inefficient, at least compared to the perfect scenario. And so at least on paper, at least for now this is definitely the ultimate theoretical limit of energy storage. As a matter of fact, in terms of practicality, these black holes are extremely unlikely to exist just because of the requirements for their properties. For example, in order to even stabilize them and to prevent them from destroying themselves through Hawking radiation, these tiny black holes have to be non-rotating and contain a lot of charge. But we know that pretty much all black holes rotate at least a little bit, so making them non-rotating would already be a challenge. These are known as the reissner nordstrom metric black holes, and at least for now they're still very hypothetical and potentially don't exist. Likewise, even to create this, we would require engineering that's just way beyond our abilities. And so this is purely theoretical, at least until we find one of these around the solar system. And if it's ever discovered somewhere in the solar system, okay, then the story changes. We might actually find a way to extract energy with it and even turn it into a cosmic nuclear reactor. But the main point is that our batteries are not very good. Even bioluminescence that I've discussed in one of the previous videos 
is way more efficient in terms of energy conversion and energy production. And that's a biological chemical reaction, which seems to be better than this. So basically we still have a lot to learn and a lot more to discover. Although if one day we discover a way to create these black holes somewhere on the planet and to then store them indefinitely, that also might change everything. Because producing energy through Hawking radiation is literally the ultimate power. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. We'll come back and talk more about these once there are actual discoveries of unusual black holes out there, or once someone proposes another unusual black hole battery. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.